it's 811 on um June 1st, 2019, and sorry about my poor appearance, but I'm on it trying to document. So I'm in pain. I have pain in my neck. Yesterday it was my back. Um, I'm trying to document some of the stuff going on with me and the changes to my appearance that happen, and I'm concerned since a lot of different attacks happen. I'm hoping that no more attacks are going to happen to my face, but, um, they do keep happening in my face. And I want to point out this, um, I know I've pointed it out before, but I'm going to point it out again. These, this sort of sheen underneath my eyes, these weird kind of spots. And then of course, in the corner of my eyes, I never had before 2017, I didn't have anything going on here in the corners of my eyes. My eyes were totally normal looking and it's just gotten, then I had these lumps that showed up and I think it was during a period of time, it was right after somebody was killed. I think it was Timmy. It must have been because it was 2017, I think. Um, I got sick. Chris and I both got sick from bio illnesses, which I think were um, deliberately done to us. And I was, you know, there was a lot of other stuff we were dealing with all at the same time, including, excuse me, a pain attack here. A death of a, you know, re relation and stuff. Stabbing, that was a stabbing death. Random or racial, racially motivated, those kinds of things. But of course it was a mind control killing. I've shown how I know that. And then um, next door neighbor, Alan Collins, was also murdered the same weekend. So that was in March. And so right after that, I started to have these, like, I'd have these nights where I just slept really solid, but I was also sick. So... I, what I'm what I'm learning, there's a lot of techniques going on here that are, seem to be tired and true techniques. One is to attack people with these weapons over the night period of night time, and another is to mask the attacks with other types of conditions. And um, one of those might be disease, like you know they just give you an illness, like a cold or something. I just noticed this weird mark on my hand. I don't know where that came from. It looks like a little blood blister out of nowhere. Um. So if you're sick and you have a headache or you have all this other kind of stuff, you're, you're naturally going to attribute these symptoms to the to the sickness. And um, Chris and I don't normally get sick, but we both got sick at the same time. This was right around my birthday. Now I re remember it. It was March 29th was my birthday, and um, Timmy and Alan were killed on um, March 19th and 20th the same night. So this was about a week after that. It was right after we got back from the funeral. We both got sick. Or I, I was at the funeral, but we both got sick. Okay, um, anyway, that's when I recall the, noticing for the first time these lumps in the corner of my eyes. And then it became these things which the doctors call cortisol deposits. Those appeared also almost overnight. And it's the sim same type of thing that's appearing underneath my eyes. It's just like this weird kind of golden kind of sheen. Um, so this is, and it, it looks like these things are permanent to me. Um, they've gotten, you know, I'll check every once in a while and I'll see that they've gotten worse. I don't know that they ever, it ever goes away. Um, I don't know. Anyhow, excuse me while I rather in pain for a moment. Um, so I'm being attacked on my back for the past few days. And this was like, I had a few days of respite. I had a, um, severe pain attack. Uh, I wish I had documented the beginning of it so that I could remember because, you know, it's something about the nature of pain. Either the nature of pain affects your memory or the fact that they're just being attacked by these frequency-based weapons. They're taking away your memories or affecting your memories. So I don't remember when my last bout of back pain started exactly, but it lasted, you know, went up into my neck, lasted a couple weeks, and went on and on and on. You know, it was severe for a little while. I took some methadone to because the last time that it happened I went to the emergency room and tried to treat it they wouldn't treat me and it was this weird thing where I went into the emergency room and the pain went away to the point where while I was in the emergency room and I was there for hours um the pain was resol resolved in the emergency room so I just felt stupid by the time it, and it ended because had the pain continued I probably would have made a big stink about them not treating me but the fact that the pain resolved while I was in the emergency room I just kind of got 
mad that the whole situation even happened. And um, I've been trying to, you know, make an appointment with my doctor. There's all kinds of weird things that are getting in the way of me actually making an appointment with my doctor. Um, when I do make an appointment with him, I can almost guarantee it'll be months out. And then I will go in there and I will have no success talking to him. Because I've already tried to talk to him about this back pain, where it comes from, um, how to deal with it. And he, you know, steadfastly refuses to um, think creatively about how to, you know, because they all know. They're all pretending that they don't know what's going on. They all know exactly what's going on. And it's just a big farce. It's a big drama. Um, but meanwhile, I'm literally being harmed and literally being tortured. But this time, okay, it got really bad. I mean, I was shouting in pain, you know, um, but then they dialed it back. And so I was about to go to the emergency room, even knowing they probably wouldn't treat me, but hoping that maybe they would do the same thing they did last time and just turn off, turn down the pain, you know, because, because I wasn't going to take methadone. And the reason why I won't take methadone anymore, even though it works and I'm conservative with it and everything, um, is because, you know, it's not prescribed to me. And so therefore it's, you know, it becomes an illegal illicit drug. And therefore, if anything happens to me while I'm taking methadone and they find methadone in my system, they're going to attribute whatever happened to me by anything. I mean, I die suddenly. Um, they're going to attribute it to an overdose just, and it's going to be like, and, and in fact, I think I even had a dream right before this most recent bout that was linked to Anna Nicole Smith because Anna Nicole Smith took, w w took methadone, but in liquid methadone, I don't know what the, you know, logistics of all this are, but you know, th there was no real, um, definitive cause of death with her. And I'm sure I, you know, I'm quite sure that she too was assassinated because, it just doesn't, it's that twin pattern where it's her son and her both following a similar patterns of um, untimely sudden deaths. It gets attributed to medications or medication combinations. But, um, you know, if, even if it's not that, who's going to know? So um, it's better for me to do everything possible before. Because the other thing is that, as I mentioned before, beginning last January, they started to attack my heart after they attack my back. So I've had this pattern. So far, this hasn't happened. I hope they don't do it this time. I have not taken any medication. I have not taken so much as an aspirin this time. And, you know, it's partly because I know that this is being externally controlled. So if your body is going through something normally, taking medication might make sense because your body's kind of off doing something on its own, not... It's not like somebody's pushing buttons to torture you. This is a situation where somebody's pushing buttons to torture me. So I could take medication and then they could conceivably just dial up the torture and force me to take more. But they're also doing other things. They did something else last time, which is, and they've done this before as well. They fake, they can fake withdrawal symptoms, opioid withdrawal symptoms with these weapons. So all of a sudden you think you're in withdrawal, but you're not in withdrawal. So people if who are normally in withdrawal, their normal thought is maybe I need to take more of this medication and so I'm tapering off rather than... But I realized there was no way that I was in withdrawal. I mean, frequently this has happened when there was no way with, when I was in withdrawal. So you're taking a conservative amount of opioids and you're not addicted to opioids. You're not dependent on opioids in any way. You shouldn't be in withdrawal. So... Um, there's all then the other thing that they're doing and I and I'm now certain that this is going on because I have not taken any medication at all is um attacks to my head like I have this headache I feel like my head is just I feel like Bleh. and so normally I would say oh well I've taken some medication maybe it's affected my head that's not what's going on it's actually the directed energy weapons they're affecting my head with and I'm getting other I've had other kinds of attacks going on concurrently. And, you know, all of a sudden my whole face gets itchy. Um, forced coughing, which makes my back spasm, which makes it worse. Um, fortunately, I haven't had too much of that. Um, and leg aches. And I've been also attacked in the night, so I'm sweaty at night. You know, again, if you were taking opioid-based medications or something like that, you might think that, oh, I'm sweaty, I'm in withdrawal, or I'm having some sort of response to opioids. I've taken nothing. But the sweating started before the back pain started. So I'm sweating 
meaning that I'm being microwaved at night. I've got leg pains that I now know are linked to microwave weapons. I used to get those in the past and think they were other things. Um, and headaches that shouldn't be, you know, I don't know why I would be getting headaches with this back pain, but I'm also getting some neck pain now. So that's just kind of a rundown of what's going on, but it's, it's, um, this, this using of other conditions to mask microwave attacks seems to be, um, one of the techniques and it's scary. You know, I don't know what they're doing to my head. I don't know what they're doing to my body, you know, and a lot of the stuff that they do, you probably can't feel because the thing is, I think that your body is the way your nervous system is rigged. Um, you don't have the same type of, um, sensations in your internal organs, say that you do on your skin or in your muscles. So, um, presume, and, and they've already shown me that they can do things to the inside of your body without the outside of your body seeming to be affected. They've done that to my throat. Um, I have implants in my throat, but they, you know, created this red blistery thing in my throat and tons of mucus and all this kind of stuff. It was a disease, mimicking a disease. They made me lose my voice for a really extended period of time, and it was extremely painful. I even went to the emergency, and I wouldn't normally go to the emergency room about a sore throat ever, unless it was like a bad case of strep throat and I couldn't see a doctor in a timely manner. Um, but this was, you know, at least as painful as a bad case of strep throat, but there was no fever. But it was, you know, extremely painful and I had lost my voice. I went to the emergency room about that and they treated it like it was nothing. Like if I went to the records and I even brought my um, bug detector with me and I showed the doctor there's frequencies coming out of my throat like literally coming out of my throat. And he looked at it and I even had to, my, I had lost my voice so much. I had to write down my symptoms for him to see, to read because I couldn't tell him about them. And he treated it like in the records as if I was just in there with a, like a, a mild sore throat or something. And he called me delusional. I showed him the radio frequencies coming out of my, I showed him empirical evidence and he said nothing. And then I, you know, gave me the, the slip of paper and called me delusional. So this is the kind of thing that's going on when I try to get medical treatment.